Good evening, my people. Recommendations a doctor can give to a client when managing or preventing diabetic nephropathy. What recommendations, what advice can a doctor give in order to assist you manage diabetic nephropathy? This will be the topic of the day. Welcome back to our, our, our YouTube channel. And before we continue with this topic, you are there watching this video for the first time and you have not sub subscribed. Just take a second or two. Subscribe, like, share and comment on this video so that they may reach as many people as possible. To our returning subscribers, I always appreciate you people for the good job you are doing to this channel. Let's continue uh, being one big family and support this channel to grow to greater heights. Recommendations a doctor can give to a client or a patient when preventing diabetic nephropathy. Number one. As we, we have been talking about diet, eat foods low in salt. Eat foods low in salt. That's why we always um, discourage people with diabetes, with, sorry, with hypertension from taking salt. Actually, we usually advise them to take zero salt because salt can contribute in raising the, the, the blood pressure. So, eat foods low in salt. Number two, avoid adding salt to meals. There are those, those who people who love adding salt, with me included, adding salt on top. The food has been cooked, it's served on the table, then you want to add so, salt on it. That's not good. So, avoid adding salt to meals. Number three, maintain a, mo a moderate weight or lose weight if you are overweight or have obesity. Maintain a moderate weight, lose weight, or if you are overweight or obesity. Number four, avoid drinking alcohol. Let me repeat these points. Eat foods low in salt. Avoid adding salt to meals. Number three, maintain a moderate weight or lose weight if you are obese or overweight. Number four, avoid taking or drinking alcohol. A point to note. A doctor may recommend that you follow a low fat, low protein diet. All work with a registered dietitian to come up with an individualized eating plan to support your kidney health. This is very important. That a doctor may recommend that you follow a low fat, low protein diet, or work with a registered dietitian or nutritionist to come up with an individualized eating plan to support your kidney health. I hope you get that. Exercise. Preservation of this kidney. If you have been keen with this topic, it all rotates up around diet, foods you should eat, exercises, diet, food you should eat. So, exercise. Getting at least 30 minutes of daily physical activity can help lower both blood pressure and blood glucose. <laughs> so, this means that exercises in our day-to-day -day life, even if you are not diabetic or hypertensive, Exercises are very, very important.
getting at least 30 minutes of daily physical activity can help lower both blood pressure and blood glucose. Getting at least 30 minutes of daily physical activity can help lower both blood pressure and blood glucose. Exercise has the added benefit of stress relief. Exercises do relieve stress. That's why even myself, when I'm stressed, I can decide to go to the gym. At least doing the exercises will relieve the stress. So exercise has the added benefit of stress relief which can help lower blood pressure. If you are, your blood pressure is rising because you are being stressed or you have stress, having an exercise or having a 30 minute exercise can help uh, relieve stress. These exercises also help in burning fat. If you are obesity or you are overweight, you have to burn the fats and the calories. When you burn the fats and the calories, because this fat can also lead to high blood pressure. So when you burn these fats, you reduce the weight and uh, uh, put you in a better place to avoid, or in a better position to avoid high blood pressure. I hope you are together up to that point. So, talk to your doctor or your healthcare prof provider about the type and intensity of physical activity that would best fit you or that will be best for you. According to age, you can tell an 80 year old man to go to the gym and lift a hundred kilos of those weights. You can tell a, a hundred year old man or lady to do rope jumping. So one, depending on the, the, the age, you can assign somebody the exercises that best fit him or her, be it walking, be it rope jumping, if young, you can send him or her to the gym, hmm? running, jogging. So there are so many exercises that you can uh, you can plan for somebody depending on the age. This exercise will, will help to relieve stress, reduce fats if you are obese and help in avoiding high blood pressure or hypertension. So talk to your doctor about the type and intensity of physical activity that would best fit or, or, you, or that will be best for you. Intensity means sim simply means the rate at which you will be doing the exercise. You can compare a 15 year old lady jump roping with a 30 year old lady doing the same. Definitely the young age is more lighter than the aging or the elderly. So the young the young girl can do more reps or can can have a high intensity compared compared to an elderly or a aged a person. So, let's talk about medication. Most people with type 2 diabetes who have high blood pressure take S inhibitors for heart disease treatment such as captopril or enalapril. Most people with type 2 diabetes who have high blood pressure take S inhibitors for heart disease treatment such as Captopril or Enaropril. Those are the two common uh, drugs used in treatment of heart disease. 
These drugs have the potential to lower or slow progression of kidney disease. So they can lower or slow down the rate at which this kidney disease is progressing. A point to note. Sodium contra Sporta 2 inhibitors and glucagon like peptide 1 receptor agonists are uh, other possible medication med medication options for people with type 2 diabetes and chronic kidney disease. I know the names might be confusing and they hard terminologies but if you get the sense it will best help you. Sodium contrasporter 2 inhibitors and glucagon like peptide 1 is receptor agonists are other possible medication medication options for people with type 2 diabetes and chronic kidney disease. These drugs can reduce the risk of chronic kidney disease progression and cardiovascular accident events. Cardiovascular accident simply means things like heart attack. So these drugs, which drugs? Cautopril, enalapril, sodium contrasporta 2 inhibitors and glucagon-like peptide peptide 1 receptor agonists can reduce risk of chronic kidney disease progression and cardiovascular accident events. This marks the end of our video today. Thank you for your support. And those who have given their topics and they have not been discussed, don't be discouraged. Just be patient with me and in due time your topic will be discussed. Let's have a, a wonderful day ahead.